You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor Wade. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager at UKC, and I'm joined today by the Director of Hunting Ops, Alan Gingrich. What's going on today, Alan? Well, it's just another day. It's Tuesday, and uh good day. It's a special day today. It's yeah, your birthday. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> by the time they listen to this, they'll be too late, though, to wish you yeah, a little too late. I'm the oldest kid in the family. My dad called me today, you know, and I told him, I said, well, you had a whole lot to do with it, but yeah, here we are. I'm not going to say how much later, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's, a, it's a good day to get down here and talk about coon dogs, I guess. Yeah, heck yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, we're going to, we, a couple uh, weeks ago, we had a two-part series uh, where we talked about all the top producing males of all time and took a look at who may be next. And uh, today we're going to do that for females. Uh, today's version is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, obviously, you know, males, they can breed a bunch of females a day, a year, a week. Yep. Uh, females are kind of limited on how many litters they can have. So you see a lot of the same numbers uh, for a lot of the top females. So I uh, kind of condensed it down a little bit, but I think we got yeah. some awesome females to talk about. Today. And obviously these females aren't going to have the number because of that, what you just mentioned, the females aren't going to have the numbers that the sires do. Uh, but still we're going to be looking at some impressive reproduction records here on females. I can tell you that. Yeah. So for some some eye-popping percentages we're about yeah. to talk about for yeah. some of them. But, but hey, first things first, we're here at the f beginning of the year right now, um, and our QEs are starting to get cranked up. We've uh, seen a couple in the books already, and I don't know, just take maybe a couple minutes here to talk about some of the, the things with RQEs. Obviously, the RQE schedule's been set since uh, late October. We, we posted online, so you can always refer to the UKC Dogs website. There's a tentative list of RQEs. That's not 100% set in stone, so be sure you're going to the web calendar and kind of looking at those events and making sure that they are, in fact, happening. Uh, obviously, you'll get your deadlines and your uh, directions and GPS addresses from there anyway, so make sure you're double-checking that list. Um, but, uh, hey, one thing that we've had pop up a little bit, I think uh, there's maybe some confusion as far as... Uh, RQEs, who can hunt in them, who can't, once you get qualified, and they're a little bit different. Uh, in a show, a qualifying show, a dog can be entered um, multiple times. You can have multiple wins at RQEs. You can you can continue hunting or sorry, showing a dog after they've already qualified, and that's a little different from the hunt. It is uh, totally the opposite. Yeah, once a dog's qualified in the hunt portion, they are not eligible to enter into other qualifying hunts. You know, obviously, a master of hounds who's working a, a RQE may not know that you're already qualified ahead of time. So uh, the person handling the dog and the owner of the dog has to kind of handle the burden of knowing if your dog's qualified or not because if you go in a qualifying event after you're already qualified that win's going to be illegitimate all for in our eyes it's all for not yep that'll be an ineligible entry so to speak yeah there is one exception however and that has to do with our chartered breed day association events and those are oftentimes breed specific um i think all of them are uh so if you go to plot days there's going to be an all plot rqe you go to redbone days an all redbone rqe you know so on and so forth and when you go to those events according to our rule book and, and what we've put out you are actually eligible to hunt in those all breed rqe hunts at your breed days even if you're already qualified that's right that's right and the reason that we did that was so a lot of the breed associations name their overall winner based on the dog's performance of all three nights and most of these are happening on a thursday night when it's just an all uh, all blue or all plot or what have you all red uh hunt uh for that uh, for that rqe but uh, to not take away from those dogs overall and give them the opportunity to be in for the overall awards or whatever so uh not to take them out of that so in that sense that's the only rqe that is that happens at the charter breed day hunt where a dog that is already qualified can still enter that obviously if they win it's not they're already qualified doesn't matter but they might have other uh other carrots out there they're going for and that's perfectly fine Yep, and you'll see that in our rule book. I don't didn't bring a rule book down here with me, but when you look in the world uh, world hunt and world show yeah. uh, portions of the rule yeah. book, that's where you'll find that information. Yep. At, so. And I think most all of the breed uh, associations do have a uh, all uh, breed only RQE. Now there was the the red or the walkers did not. Who else did not? One other one maybe. 
Yeah, I think the, I think the one you may be referring to is probably the English Association. Just a couple of years ago, they started having a, an all English RQE on Wednesday night. But uh, yeah, the Walkers were the only ones that have kind of been holding out off on being a uh, having an RQE at the Breed Day event. Yeah, and I'm not even sure if we can really say this or not, but I guess we might let it slip up a little bit. I know the Train Walker Association just had their annual directors meeting, and they. Uh, had this topic came up, and I believe you're going to see a RQE at the Train Walker Days on Thursday as well. Now, yeah, a couple. They actually have a couple things in the work to they do to some, revamp Walker Days. So some that's good exciting. things, yeah. So people should uh, certainly watch out for that information that they put out. A couple changes for Walker Days. Yeah, yeah. As you're listening to this now, there's probably been a couple RQEs uh, that have happened uh, for us recording. There's only been one that's happened so far, and that's the. The annual Christmas Classic, that's the fourth one they've had this year. And December, actually, the only one that has one before January. Yeah. And they have a, an RQE bench show only. That's the only uh, qualifying portion of it. Uh, but this is the third year in a row, or third year they've had it. The first two years, they had the best qualifying bench show of the entire year. And it, that's Angie Cable that puts it on up there at the Milton uh, Coon Club. Up that's right, there in, County. Yeah. And uh, she does such a great job. I'm telling kudos to Angie. Good job again this year. And I've talked to several people that were there and just how good the event was. You know, you know we need more of that. Yeah. If, you know, that she does a great job with it. And, and, man, people that want to put that much effort into it and do that much, why would we not consider that? And, hey, kudos to her and, and good job again. Yeah, great job. Good, jo- good show. Great job by the club, something that kind of started out on the ground level, and they've worked that thing up, and they've turned that thing into a major event at this point. Absolutely have, and it just goes to show what you can do with a little, uh, with uh, putting some effort into it, getting some support and people to help you out, and there you go. Yeah. Well, hey, let's shift gears to our main topic today. We're going to be talking about uh, top female reproducers of all time, and then maybe who's next in the list of things. Uh, We're going to do the the breeds in sequence here by what we have them. So we're starting out with black and tan today. And like the male, if you didn't listen to the males, you should go back and listen to those. But we're going to start out talking about some of the historical reproducers. And for the females, we're going to do a top five. So this is the top five in uh, in order of how many titled offspring they have. Doesn't matter. There's no minimum on number of pups they've had to have. There's no percentages. There's no dates we got to worry about. It's just the most titled offspring they've had of all time. Which and is not necessarily the same as the reproduction records you'll see published in our monthly magazine, Kunon Bloodlines, but it's one we put together just totally, as you said, based on uh, the number of pups, titled pups produced. Yeah, no other parameters. That's it. So let's start out with the black and tan historical list. And the number one historical reproduced in black and tan female is dual grand champion puke box Annie. Uh, Annie had 43 pups on the ground. 20 of them made night champion. Three made grand night for a total of 23. And that equates to 53.48%. <laughs> that is pretty good. Now, you're, you're, uh, you know more about the black and tans than I do. You said you had a dog off of puke box Annie, I guess. But she's sired by Bowers, Kansas, Jr., and her mother was also a dual grand, Rough Creek Little Ann. She's a 2007 model that was bred by Pete uh, Mullis and Corey Bass and owned by Jason and Judy Short. Puke Box Annie, number one historical reproducer here. Yeah, if you listen to the male episode where we talked about Ugly Stick and me driving over to Western Kentucky uh, to get a, a pup out of Ugly Stick, it was actually out of Puke Box Annie as well. So yeah. Well worth the drive. I like that little black dog. He was a he was a good one. Actually, the first dog I ever titled out. So, forty three pups, twenty three of them are titled. That's crazy good. Yes, sir. Number two is going to be another name that a lot of people have heard, and that's Grand Night Champion Kentucky River Chigger. Uh, Chigger forty one pups, but twenty one of them have titled out. Eight night champions and thirteen Grand Knights. And that equates to 51.21%. Yep. Dark Hollow Tige. Is that how you pronounce that? Tige? T, I think. I think they call it T. That's a Grand Knight dog. And then Grand Knight Holloway's Tennessee Black Chigger is the mother to Kentucky River Chigger. And this is a dog that I heard a lot ever since I've been at United Kennel Club. This dog was, was big in the performance program when we first started it. You know, a lot of her pups were up there and earning those performance points. But she has a birth date of 2001. Bred by Mr. Steve Holloway, and the owner was Tony Grubb, Kentucky River Chigger. Yeah, one Impress- of Chigger's. Impressive resume for her. One of Chigger's most uh, famous crosses would, of course, be the one with Newt that produced Batman and Kozar and some of those, uh, yeah. that whole litter, Gage, a whole litter full of of good dogs. And uh, 
Yeah, speaking of Kozar, I kind of segued into this next one here. Number three is a dog out of uh, Dual Grand Crockett's Black Kozar and Dean's Black Cat Bottom Windy, and that's going to be Dual Grand Champion Crockett's Black Windy. Yeah, she had 50 pups, 11 were night champions, and nine grands for a total of 20 out of those 50 are titled 40% reproduction records. She's got a 2012 birth date bred by uh, Louis Dean and is owned by Preston and Steve Null. Crockett Black Windy. Probably one of the more modern ones that we're going to see on this list, uh, for sure, black and tans. But uh, uh, on the whole list, I think, as far as she's one that's been kind of hot the past few years and probably still have a few more dogs to title out, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she no, thought she'd be a t- uh, about 11-year-old this year, I guess. Yeah, yeah, st- yeah. still got some dogs yeah. out there that are probably a couple wins away from titling out, I'd yep. say. So, uh, Number four, historical reproducing black and tan female is going to be champion, grand night champion, Coulter's Ringtail Genie. Uh, Jeannie's has 53 pups on the ground, 10 made night champion, 7 made grand night champion, or 17 total, and that equates to thirty, just a touch over 32%. Yep, and she is off of a uh, black and tan sire that I'm somewhat familiar with, uh, uh, Alan, uh, Alan uh, Holdings. Holdings, uh, Holdings Northern Rocket Dog, and uh, the mother is night champion Coulter's Kinetic KT. Katie, I guess is probably what he calls her there, but uh, born in 2006, Bred by, uh, bred and owned by Mr. Reese Coulter, Coulter's Ringtail Genie. Yeah. If you're, uh, looking to get into the black and tan game, uh, one thing to know is, I, I, if you're wanting a good pup, I always like to get one out of a good female. That's a good place to start. There's a lot of good males out there that everybody knows about, but finding a good female is sometimes hard, especially in some of these breeds. And if you go to give uh, Reese Coulter a call, he's usually got a good female. He has uh, many lines of good females, and he makes really quality crosses, and that's where you come up with a number four historical reproducer. Yeah, like but I think I think you'll hear a lot of the good, successful breeders will say that the females had a whole lot to do with it. And there's some females you can pretty much breed about anything, you know. Yep. But, uh, yeah, the females are a big part of it. Yep. Uh, number five historical reproducer is a, a really well-known uh, female here, Grand Knight Champion Bowers, Kansas Jewel. Uh, Jewel had 61 pups on the ground, nine made night champion, seven made grand uh, for a total of 16, and that equates to uh, 26%. Yeah, it seemed like when we were talking about the, uh, in the previous episodes, when we were talking about the male reproduction record, it seemed like Kansas Jewel came up several times there. But uh, out of world night champion, grand night champion, J&R Northern Buck 2, and her mother was grand night champion, grand champion, Fox River Mandy, another another name we talked about quite a bit born in 1996 bred uh, by mr bill shanker and owned by blaze bauer comes up uh, number five on our list kansas jewel yeah oldest one on the historical list there 1996 birthday that's surprising yeah yeah uh next we're going to take a look at who could be next and we i pulled this information from a couple couple different places obviously from the the january issue of coonhound bloodlines the current reproducers list I kind of looked on there to see who's who the current reproducers were. Um, also, I got uh, our programmer Carrie to uh, to run a list for me of all the titled pups from December first, twenty twenty two, to December first, twenty twenty three, and see what females produced the most titled pups in that time period. That kind of gives us a good look at what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. And then also, I don't know, a couple of them on here may just be dogs that we see a lot of places. You know, obviously we look at sires and dams at world finals and TOC finals and that sort of thing. So uh, could be a hosh posh of what dog where we yeah. pull this information from. Yeah. But these are going to be some uh, some up and comers here. And the first one is going to be. One with a little bit of a, a original name here. This is Doo Wops Jojo the Circus Clown. Uh, the dog here, I'm going to call her Jojo. I'm not sure what her name is, what her, what her call name is, but she right now she's the current number one reproducer. Um, and she is actually tied for second this year as far as the number of title pups she's had this year. Uh, altogether, she has 22 pups on the ground. Three have made night champion so far with one grand and out. And that makes a total of four, and she's sitting at right eight, right at eighteen percent right now. Yeah, that dog was bred by Mark Jones and owned by Joe Gillett and Mitchell Wise, twenty fifteen model for uh, Circus Clown. Yeah, JoJo the Circus Clown. Whoever, and I'm not, I don't know who named that dog, but <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Doo-Wop name is a little familiar to me from Eng- uh, from Black and Tan dates the past couple uh, of years. Yeah, They've yeah. had some looks. So. Yeah, yeah. She's a uh, Jones's Alabama lick daughter and. Uh, her mother was night champion Carolina Super Sally. This next dog here is going to be one that uh, earned its stripes in the performance ring before they ever started uh, breeding it, and this is going to be Grand Night Champion Two Simple Life Sadie. 
uh, Sadie right now, the current number two reproducer on the reproducers list. And also, again, tied for second with uh, JoJo the Circus Clown as far as titled pups this year with a couple. Um, Sadie's getting a little older in age, but she's so far she has 39 pups on the ground. Five of them made night champion, and two have granted out for a total of seven. And she's sitting right at 18% right now. Yeah, she was born in 2014, bred by Jeff Nelson, owned by Chad McCoin and Brad Isle in Indiana. Uh, McCoin's Black River buddy was her sire and off of a dual grand female, Nelson's Northern Mandy too. Jeff Nelson female there. Yeah, they've uh, they've made some really quality crosses on Sadie the past couple of years, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me to see that uh, titled pup number keep growing for yep. them. Yep, and that's a name I remember from Black and Tan Days and other events where she herself was a, you know, she's a grand knight too, uh, but where she did quite a bit of winning herself. Yep, I know she for sure won Queen of Hunt at least once. Though, yep, so. yep. Uh, the current number three reproducer on the list right now is Grand Knight Champion Lone Hill Mabel. Uh, Mabel currently has 29 pups on the ground. Uh Five total titled pups, two night champions, and three grands, and that sits puts her at right at 17% as well. Yeah, she's off that Lone Hill Brutus dog, a dual grand, and bad to the bones Black Hawk Hannah, uh, born in 2012, bred by David Kent, known by Don Redman. Don is from Oklahoma? Is it Oklahoma? Arkansas? Oklahoma? Nah, or either Arkansas or Missouri, I think. Maybe Missouri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apologize for that, Don, but uh, I know I know Don when I see yeah. him, you know, big guy, but uh, yeah, good, good guy too, but yeah. They had a lot of luck with their dogs over the years. Yeah. Yep. Uh, next one here, a guy that we've talked about a couple of times in the male portion of the Black and Tans, and that's David Gilman. He comes in as the breeder and owner of this uh, 2015 model dog, and that's field champion, night champion, grand champion, Gilman's late night gypsy. Uh, gypsy right now, the current number four reproducer on the list. Yep. 34 pups, uh, four titled ones, four night champions there, and, and uh, gypsy is off of Kentucky River Batman, and her mother is night champion Gilman's Lady Bell's Legacy, bred by David Gilman, also owned by David. Uh, 2015 birth date here, but, you know, David's been hunting, breeding, showing a lot of his dogs, every everything with uh, with his dogs. And and you'll, we're probably going to start here in the next 10 years. We'll see a lot more of his dogs probably get up into these lists. Yeah. The thing about him, and we talked about in the males, is he seems to always be moving on to the next one and, yep. and trying to better his yep. line. So. Yep. Uh, next one on the list, current number five reproducer is, uh, not to be, uh, confused with the last gypsy, but here we have grand night champion blue blues bands, gypsy woman, uh, gypsy woman currently has 41 pups on the ground, one night champion, three grand nights for a total of four. And she's hovering around the 10% line with those numbers. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's a grand night and she's off of a dual grand bad to the bones, black hawk. That's a name. I remember that's a, that's a black hawk was a dog that, uh, uh, was starting to compete. I think he was running the Prina series when he was really young, about the time I started working at UKC and just a consistent cast mm-hmm. winner. And he was a, he was consistent throughout his whole life. It seemed like, uh, it was an old black Hawk. Uh, the mother was a dual grand or a champion, grand night champion, bad to the bone, Snooky born in 2014, talking about gypsy woman here, bred by Ira, Jesse Johnson and owned by Michael Barnes, Craig Clay and Lovis Burns. What a trio there. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah. yeah. Always toting good dogs, those guys are. Yep. And uh the, the the number one reproducer for this year so far in the in the year of twenty twenty three is Grand Knight Champion Wilson's Royal Black Sadie Two. Uh three dogs titled out this year already, which leads the black and tan breed. Uh she has twenty five pups on the ground total, one night champion, three grand knights for a total of four, and that puts her right at sixteen percent. Yeah, yep. Off of Wilson's Black Royal Wizard. And dual Grand Wilson's Royal Black Ice, bred by Michael Wilson, and also owned by Michael Wilson. She was born in 2012. Wilson's Royal Black Sadie II. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that may be the dam to the uh, deuce dog that you see uh, running around at some of the major events. Yeah. There's a lot of luck. Th- one Black and Ten Days, three yeah. years in a row. So Yeah, so there's some pretty impressive... Uh, pretty impressive reproduction records for those uh, uh for those top five and and kind of cool to see some of these up and comers too yeah i wonder who can crack in there yeah. we'll see as time uh, progresses here yep. uh we'll move on to the leopards now uh obviously not a ton of uh back history on the leopard breed yet but we do have a couple here with some uh impressive numbers and the first one is a name that i feel like we said a couple times in the male episodes as well that was uh the mother to a bunch of the top producing males and that's night champion grand champion sparks high plane crayon mm-hmm. crown 
I don't I have a hard time saying crown like you guys do up here. So <laughs> you may crayon. have <laughs> simple crayon you may have to translate it for me. <laughs> but uh, she uh, currently has 41 pups on the ground. A Tennessee seven. accent. You just can't get away from it. I know. I say it like with, uh, <laughs> with somebody wears on their head. I feel like but, uh, didn't, but uh, <laughs> didn't want to interrupt here. I want to make sure we get this number of pups out here without yeah. interruption. Yeah. 41 pups for, for the dog and seven night champions, one grand night for a total of eight. And that puts the dog at 20%. Yeah. Nice leopard, record. For leopard leopard female. Yeah. Named Crayon. High Plain Crayon. She is off of uh, just two registered dogs, uh, uh, non-title dogs, Wright's Ben and Wright's Little Lady, born in 2009, bred by Mr. Earl Wright and is owned by Mr. R. Wayne Bowman. I think he's from Tennessee. That's correct. Yep. Um, High Plain Crayon. Yeah. Next one on the list here, number two historical reproducer is McDill's Pretty Girl. Uh, Pretty Girl has 50 pups on the ground, three night champions, and two grands for a, to- yeah, for a total of five, and that puts the dog at 10%. Yep, this dog was, uh, has a 2002 birth date, and the sire is not listed for her, so she must have been one of the single registered dogs, but her mother is Lewis's Cheetah. That was bred by John and Randy McDill and owned by Douglas Garver. Yeah, 50 pups for a Pretty Girl. Yeah, it's quite a few. Five title dogs. And and you really, you know, the leopards being fairly new in competition in UKC, um, you know, some of these older females like this one, their dogs weren't being hunted in our events that much, you know, at the time. But obviously 50 pups, they must have been uh, uh, some desirable pups or she must have been doing her part. But yeah, managed to get five title dogs. Yeah. Hey, one thing I kind of like about what we're doing is it, we're going to mention the number three one here, and that's champion Keen's Miss Camo Wick. Uh, Camo Wick only has 10 pups on the ground, and three of them have titled out. Uh, and that's a dog you wouldn't, you wouldn't see on our current or our historical reproducers list because yeah. it doesn't meet the parameters with yeah. only 10 pups. Yeah. But three out of 10, pretty impressive for yeah. 30% there. Yeah, one out of every three. Yeah. Uh, obviously off of Johnson's Camo Wick and then Johnson's Camo Dixie. Uh, born in 2016, bred by Penny Johnson, owned by Mr. Jason Keene from Virginia, I think he is. Yeah, had a whole slew of them here tied for fourth with two each, 11 of them total. So I'm just going to mention their names real quick. I didn't want to uh, take up too much time yeah. just on one breed. we got yeah. F.S. Rarden, Slough Creek Brownie, Lakers Bobby Girl, Grand Champion Skyline Myrtle, Gaines is Floyd River Gabby, Grand Champion Grand Night Champion Circle M. Grace, Black Ridge Cali, Goins Wicks, Camo Jug, Double Judy, Bows Camo Cleo, Water Champion Boisters, Smoking Skinny Bones, NNF's Miss Pickles, and Grand Champion Possum Creek Loctite Gin. So a couple dogs that have a couple each. So uh, moving on to who could be next. Uh, right now we only have one dog on our current reproducers list in the in the leopard breed. And coincidentally, that dog is also at the top of the list of as far as dogs, uh, title dogs produced this year. And that's Thunderstruck H&A's Indigo Sky. Uh, Sky had 21 pups on the ground currently with uh, one uh, one title dog um, and Sky out of a old world champion. Yeah, world show champion, grand champion Elburn's Indigo. That was kind of a black and white looking dog, if I remember right. Uh, RNA's Lily of the Valley is the mother to this dog, born in 2015, bred by Adina Fussnecker and owned by Brooke Mooney. Brooke is in Georgia? Yeah, I think Georgia. Georgia yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kind of an up-and-comer. Yeah, Indigo Sky. A yeah. couple more uh, females in the leopard breed have produced a titled dog this uh, this year so far. That's Deep South Delta Dawn. Uh, out of her 24 pups, one titled so far. Um, she's out of Night Champion McDill's Johnny Reb and McDill's Fancy. Uh, with a 2011 birth date, and breeder was Lee Burke, and the owner was J.W. McGee. Yep, Deep South Delta Dawn. And the other one was actually one we mentioned on the overall list here with two total, and that's uh, Grand Champion Possum Creek Loctite Gin. Uh, 26 pups for Gin and two two total uh, two total titled pups for for Gin. Yeah, she's off of a dog that I'm kind of familiar with: Water Champion, Field Champion, Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Riley's Flathead Valley Bolt HTX. I think we kind of talked about him a little bit in the previous episode here for uh leopard uh sires or leopard reproduction records but that dog that bolt dog he won quite a bit uh starting i remember even as a registered dog and kind of all the way through he was uh he wasn't and his mother or the mother here was carlax josie uh, born in 2016 bred by mr john carlack and owned by mark barber possum creek loctite gin yeah yeah uh, 
uh, out of both there, mentioned him, Moose, number one male reproducer. So yeah, kind of yep. passing on his genes, yep. lineage there. Yep, there you go. Moving on to the blue ticks here, and and a impressive list of blue ticks. Seems like you had hunted with a lot of these dogs, or hunted with dogs and these dogs' pedigrees. Um, we'll start out here with the number one historical reproducer, and that's night champion, grand champion, Spring Hill Blue Jenny. Uh, Jenny actually produced 74 pups, which is a lot when you look at a female's uh, history. At 17 of them made night champion, six made grand night for a total of 23, and that puts Jenny around 31%. Yeah, and she's off a night champion Slash Creek Blue Mule, and her mother was Slash Creek Blue Maggie, born in 1998. Uh, bred by Mr. Dave Jenkins and was owned by Tony Clevenger from North Carolina, I think it is. Tony was a baseball player. You should know this, right? Wasn't <laughs> he a baseball player? I don't Tony, know the answer. I think he was. Yeah. Oh, gone it. I, I should have looked at this and, and looked that up, but I think he was. He played professional baseball, I want to say. I may be way off base, and I'm sure somebody's going to is gonna say, what, what are you talking about? But I think he was, actually. But, hey, you know, 74 pups here. For a dog, you don't have we don't have it listed, noted here how many litters that was, but to to for a female to produce seventy four pups, that's you know you're thinking their first litter is going to probably be around three years of age, right. two to three years, probably closer to three years, and I don't know averaging what she must have had either had some really good averages and big litters, or she was raising puppies. Uh, barefoot and pregnant most of the time of her <laughs> life or something. I don't know. That's, a, that's one yeah. of the higher numbers we'll see today. Yeah. 74. Yep. That's pretty impressive. 23 titled pups for Blue Jenny. Uh, number two historical blue tick reproducing female is night champion Blue Creek hey, Alice. Maybe, hey, maybe while we're going through this, we can get somebody to look up uh, Tony, uh, do a little Google Tony Clevenger and see if I'm right or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Blue Creek Alice here, the number two blue tick female. Uh, Atlas had 49 pups, 11 made night champion, 11 made grand night champion for a total of 22. And that puts her at 45%. Not bad at all. Yeah. That's a, that's a dog that I'm familiar with there, but, uh, yeah, there's another one. Tucker's blue boomer was her sire. We, we talked about him some in one of the previous episodes on the sire listings and was off of a female named grand night champion B and D's blue Ruby. And that's a dog I hunted with quite a bit. Uh, this dog was born in 2009, talking about Blue Creek Alice, that was uh, bred by uh, Brent Bissell and Dan Rons, and that's where that B&D comes on, uh, Blue Ruby, B and, or, uh, Bissell and, and Rons, uh, I guess Brent and Daniel, actually. Uh, but the owner was uh, Bob Tully and Michael Shepard, and then Daniel uh, Rainville on that dog, but Blue Creek Alice, yep, bred to, bred to reproduce, and that's what she did. Yeah, kind of funny when you we see a lot of the same names, um, sire and dam, and then on the list, uh, the top reproducers list. It's not perfect. Everybody knows that there's there going to be some flaws to it, and and some dogs get in, uh, you know, and and off just out of nowhere. But a lot of times, when you breed top reproducers, the top reproducers, you got a good a good shot of uh, coming out with a reproducer as well. So yeah, just some interesting, kind of interesting. Uh, number three historical reproducer here is Grand Night Champion Prairie Creek Blue Josie. Uh, Josie, 43 pups, seven night champions, 11 Grand Knights for a total of 18. Puts her right at 42%. Yeah, she was off of Baird's Blue Bow and Baird's Blue Sioux Girl were her uh, sire and dam there. Uh, born in 2005, uh, bred by William and Jared Baird and owned by Jason Schulte of uh, Wisconsin, I believe is where Jason lives, and Brian Weber. Brian Beber? Yes, I don't know Brian, but yeah. Yeah, number four, a re historical blue tick reproducing female is a name we just mentioned. Uh, Grand Knight champion B&D's Blue, uh, blue Ruby. She's on the list, and she produced a female on the list. Uh, Ruby, blue 46 pups, eight night champions, nine Grand Knights for a total of 17. Brings her in right at 37%. Yep, and she was off of a dog named B&D's Blue Spike. And I remember back in the day, even Dick Brothers from down there around us, you know, Big Walker guy or whatever, Spike was, uh, he talked pretty highly of Spike. And Spike was a coon dog against anything. I loved that dog. Did a, did a, always did a nice job. And the mother, I hunted with her a lot too. Steve Kitchen owned her Twilight Blue Poison Ivy. So that cross right there. You know, and you're talking about Ruby, uh, talking about uh, producing as good or better than yourself. Here's a good example. You know, we talked about that Alice female. Here's uh, Alice uh, is placing above her mother here in this list. Pretty impressive. Born in 2005, uh, bred by Sandra Motherall and uh, and uh, Erica Kitchen. 
and is owned by uh, Brent Bissell and Dan Rons again from Michigan. Got a couple of females here tied for fifth overall. First one's going to be Night Champion, Tree Slam, and Blue Lady. A uh, lady, 48 pups on the ground, 10 Night Champions, 6 Grand Knights for a total of 16. And that puts her right at 33.3333%. Yep, that's a female that I hunted with quite a bit also from uh, Michigan up here and just a real deal. She could she could put up a score too. She was off of uh, Northern Blue Jet 5 and her mother was Night Champion Badlands Blue Lady 2. Born in 2000, bred by Jason Kaler and owned by Jody Nichols. Uh, number f- and uh, also tied in the number five historical reproducer is Grand Knight Champion, Champion Davis's White River Salen Sadie. Uh, 55 pups for Sadie, eight Knight Champions, eight Grand Knights for a total of 16, and that puts her at 29%. Yep, Sadie is one of those that uh, I've only ever hunted with her one time, and that was when she was in the final cast of the World Hunt. Uh, she was uh, it was the year that uh, history uh, Split Creek History Quick won won the world for females in the cast, and the Insane Jane was second. Say the uh, Sadie was third that year, uh, but she was off a of Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Smiley's Blue Rambo two, and her mother was uh, Grand Knight Champion Davis's White River Sugar. She had a 2001 birth date bred by Mr. Lonnie Smiley and Belinda Joslin and owned by our uh, good buddy Mark Vandeventer over there in, in uh, uh, Illinois and Doug Lake. I was say, any, any uh, dogs that me and you have hunted with personally the past, since our getting our jobs, they're usually pretty good because usually they make it pretty far before we start toting along with them, right? Yeah, so that's it. Get that's to see it. some good yeah. dogs and, yeah. and Sadie's one of them. And she was a good one. She was a good one. Did we get an answer on Tony Clevenger? Not yet. I don't Not think yet. we, we still got yet. some more. Yeah. We have further research to do. <laughs> yeah. Further research. So let's uh, let's talk about who the next big blue ticks are, and we'll start out with our current number one reproducer, and that's champion Grand Knight champion homebrew Blue Josie. Twenty six pups for her, one night champion, and five grands for a six total. There, twenty three percent. But she was off of Uchman's Blue Job and Uchman's Blue Sarah Sue. Talked a lot in the one of the previous episodes about the Juke. Uh, the Uchman sires, uh, Uchman hounds there. Born in 2015, bred by Mr. Gary Uchman and owned by Trey Melton. I think Trey's in maybe Missouri or Oklahoma, maybe out there, out west somewhere. Yeah. Homebro or homebrew, Blue Josie, or Blue Josie. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, current reproduced in Blue Tick, according to our uh, our latest list, is Walk Jacked Up June. Uh, June had 24 pups on the ground, two night champions and a grand for three total. Uh, puts her right at 12.5% right now. Yeah, Spring Hill Blue Ruckus and Metcalf Southern Blue Cotton Cross, their 2014 birth date. Matt Underwood is the owner and breeder there. This next one here seems familiar Actually, when you look hey, at let this me, one. Let me go back to that. Matt Underwood was the breeder. Matthew Lanford was the owner. Back up June. Oh, June, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, current number three year producer on our list is Grand Knight Champion, Lots of Grit, Wild and Blue Jazz. Uh, Jazz, 33 pups, three night champions, and one grand for four total. That puts her right at 12% right now. Yep, she's off of a local dog here in, in uh, northern Indiana, Mackie Manz's Wild and Blue Chief, and Jennings Blue River Jewel is the mother there. Uh, born in 2014, bred by Mr. Nick Jennings, and owned by Chris Powell. Old Houndsman XP itself. Yep, yep, yep. Plot hound guy, blue tick guy. Yeah, he's, he's a, got it he's all. He's everything. Now he's just running the roads, doing his podcast, and has a gravy job. It's extreme. Yep. He's extreme. <laughs> uh, the number four. Hello, Chris. <laughs> the number four current reproducer and uh, tied for second this year with the most number of uh, titled Blue Tick Pups is Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Mountain State Tessa Lou. Tessa Lou has 26 pups on the ground as of today with two Knight Champions and a Grand Knight for a total of three. Yep, Garner's Ball and Blue Hank was the sire there, and Dave's Blue Ohio Crank It Up Lou, bred by David Woofter in Ohio and owned by Ron Moore. She was born in 2017. Yeah, you see one with a 2017 birthday. That's a female who's uh, kind of ahead of the game a little bit. Yep. Could make a run at this thing. Yep. Uh, next one here, current number five reproducing uh, blue tick female is Big Time Old Pike Piper. Uh, Piper. 20 pups on the ground, uh, one night champion, one grand night for two total. Uh, kind of a, another familiar name here. Yep. Seems Meads, like we keep saying these yep. names. Yep, Mead's Blue Boomer pup, she was, and Regan's 357 Maggie. Glenn Regan was the owner and handler, or owner and breeder there, born in 2016, Piper. 
Uh, one that just fell off the current reproducers list, but is tied for second this year with a couple of titled pups, and that's night champion Blue Creek Saturday Night Special. Uh, special 25 pups currently with three night champions and four grand knights for seven total. Yep. 28%, pretty good percentage. It is. Blue Creek Gage, that was a dog that uh, was, uh, remember him competing a lot. He was a tough little sucker himself there. And here again, Blue Creek Alice, you know, passing on that uh, reproduction stuff. And this is one of them Saturday night special here. We talked about her a little while ago. Uh, bred by Mr. Danny Glista and is owned by Ron Jackson. Uh, Midnight or uh, Saturday night special. She was born in 2014. Yeah, when I mentioned them just falling off the current reproducers list and having a good percentage, like 28, uh, percent that's going to put you. Uh, the reason she fell off probably didn't meet the parameter of having a litter within the past couple of years. Yeah, so that's why that, they fall off of there. Mm -hmm. And the last blue tick female we'll mention right now is uh, the one who led the way this year so far. Uh, with number of title pups, with five title pups this year. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, that's Grand Knight champion Williams, Red Stick, Ann. Uh, Ann had 20, has 28 pups total on the ground with five night champions and two Grand Knights for seven total, and that gives her a 25%. Yeah, she's a 2011 model out of Natural Smoky River Rebel. He's a dual Grand, and then off of her mother was a Grand Knight champion, Illinois Smoky River Blue Ann too, bred by Ed Mounty from Illinois, owned by Darren Williams. Alan, I know we both have new Daltra Pathfinder 2s. How are you liking yours so far? I'm liking it. I've even had the opportunity now to use mine where I didn't have service, where I download uh, the map of that area, and uh, it works flawlessly. Love it. I agree. I really like my Daltra Pathfinder 2 as well. I've used it quite a bit the past few months. I really like the crystal clear maps. I like that it doesn't lose uh, service very much, and I can't have, I don't have many bad things to say about it at all. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Well, we'll move on now to the English breed, and we'll start out with the number one historical English reproducing female, and that is Grand Knight champion Reagan's Hatchie River Dottie. Dottie, what a, what a resume here for Dottie. 60 pups on the ground, 21 Knight champions, 11 Grand Knight champions, that, equal, that equates out to 32, and that gives her a 53.3%. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. I think you could probably do a whole episode on just on this female right here, and deservingly so, really. English female, that is, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit more about her too, but I think there's probably only one in UKC records that has produced better or more than Dottie. Uh, but yeah, she's off of Grand Knight Champion Reagan's Rebel Thunder and Grand Knight Champion Country Hollow Freebie. She was born in 2009, bred by Dennis Fitzgerald and owned by Murray Reagan in Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. So yeah. you hear, uh, hear her name. I've heard her name a lot since I've been here. Yeah, she's been really hot over the past decade. And, and Dottie, an interesting thing. Like you said, number two all time. And we'll get to the number mm -hmm. one spot down when we'll get to the mm -hmm. Tree and Walker breed. But number two, as far as number of titled offspring, uh, did it off a bunch of different males, so seemed to reproduce well on a lot of different males out of a lot of different bloodlines. So she definitely yeah. she played her part, I guarantee it. Yep. Uh, number two, uh, actually tied for second here, is uh, dual Grand Knight champion Gullets Oakwoods Diamond. Uh, Diamond, 53 pups on the ground, 11 Knight champions, 10 Grand Knights for a total of 21. Puts her right at just shy of 40% overall. Yep, this is another name I've seen a lot over the years. Born in 2003 off of Night Champion Oakwood's Sun Kissed and Gold Nugget Kate was her mother, bred by Bobby Jeanette and owned by Alan Gullet. Oakwood's Diamond. Right there in that same time frame and tied for second comes Champion Grand Night Champion Red Lady. A Red Lady, only 33 pups on the ground, but 14 of them made Night Champion, 7 of them made Grand Night Champion, 21 total. Puts her at 63%. Good percentage right there. Pretty strong better, percentage. Better than half. She was off of a night champion named Murphy's Little Hill Luke, and her mother was Kay's Annie. She was born in 2005, bred by Mr. Gary Kay, and owned by Eddie Lemon. Red Lady. We got a couple here tied for fourth as well. Actually, the rest of our list here, the rest of our top five are all tied here with 17 each. Uh, starting out with uh, one from the early 90s. That's Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion, Timber Valley Lucky. Lucky, 36 pups on the ground, five Knight Champions and 12 Grand Knights. 
17 total, 47%. Yep, I'm sure the breeder John Ferrari could uh, write a book probably on Timber Valley Lucky here if he hasn't already. But uh, <laughs> uh, there she just comes from a strain of good uh, English hounds, uh, her sire being one of those. We talked about him, I think, a little bit maybe. Grand Knight champion Wilcox's Thunder Bingo. And the mother was champion, Grand Knight champion Blue Magic Gold. She was a 1992 model. Uh, as I mentioned, bred by Mr. John Ferrari of Iowa and owned by John and uh, also co-owned with Larry Wilcox here in Michigan. Also tied at number four with 17 title pups uh, total is champion, Grand Knight champion, Moore's All Grand Kate. Uh, 40 pups overall, and out of those 17 titled offspring, nine Knight champions and eight Grand Knights. Puts her at 42.5%. Yep, uh, Dual Grand Neshoba Valley Roller was her sire, and Grand Knight champion Sandy Creek Copper was her mother, born in 1999, bred by Russell Shamlin, owned by Donald Myers. Uh, Moore's All Grand Kate, I would assume that was probably Mr. Richard Moore, I would assume, but I can't say that for sure. I would say you're right. And uh, those two females are tied also with Grand Knight champion, Grand Champion Cedar Ridge Battle Cry. Uh, cry 39 pups on the ground, 17 night champions. Uh, actually, no grands, but 17 total overall. 43 and a half percent for cry. That's just that's just really good when you really consider those percentages like that. That's just really good. That's almost every other one is yeah. going to be a titled pup. Seems like if you had a pup out of some of these females, you didn't title it out. You're just a sorry dog trainer. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah, I might be, you know. But anyway, she was off a of Cedar Ridge Redman. That's a dual grand. And then her mother was also a dual grand, Cedar Ridge Cry, uh, bred by Jonathan Thomas and owned by Jonathan Thomas. But she was born in December of 2002, Cedar Ridge Battle Cry. Impressive list of females sure there. Sure is. Who, who sure uh, is. in the English breed could uh, could possibly work their way into that. And our, our number one contender right now is a dog grand champion, grand night champion, Coon Valley Wild Skeeter. Uh, Skeeter, current number one reproducer, and also was uh, tied for first this year in number of, off of titled offspring. Uh, she has 64 pups total, so a lot of pups on the ground, seven night champions and eight grand knights as of today for 15 total. That brings her in at 23%, but I'd say a lot of them are still competing. Yep, and she had a big name daddy there in uh, grand night champion, Kyle's Big River, Jesse Lee, a dog that I've seen go several times. It's just a very consistent coon treer and uh Comes from a good line of dogs, no no surprise here. The dam was grand champion American Outlaws Wild Dog. She was born in 2012, bred by David Martin, owned by Dale and Devin Olson. Coon Valley Wild Skeeter. Uh, number two current reproduced in English female is K3's Hardtime Bella. Uh, Bella, 22 pups on the ground, five of them have titled out, five night champions. Yeah, Combs Hard Time Eddie was her sire, and Hickory Holler Crazy Kate, she was born in 2014, bred by Alex Combs and Greg Shores, owned by Kermit Hester. Uh, number three current reproducer, Grand Night Champion Dutch Creek's Blue Molly. Uh, Molly, 20 pups on the ground, three night champions, three total title dogs, uh, owned here by the by the well-known trio, Shane Cannon, Asa Briggs, and Troy Shellhorn. Boy, have they had a pile of good ones they over the past few they years. They sure have. She was born in 2013 off of Mr. Wild Child Rambo and Dual Grand Golden Oaks Boo, bred by Colt Baldwin. Blue Molly. Dutch Creek's Blue Molly. Current number four reproducer and tied for second this year with a couple of titled pups in the past year, Night Champion Oakwood's Bonnie. Bonnie, 28 pups currently with three night champions and one grand knight. Totals out to four. Uh, grand knight champion Stone Cold Steel was her sire. And Gullet's Oakwoods Ava, born in 2019, bred by Alan Gullet there. And uh, same uh, Shane Cannon, Asa Briggs, Keith Payne here are the owners here. Uh, next, number five current reproducer is night champion Funky Cold Medina. Throw back to the old early 90s song there, yeah. Funky Cold Medina. Yeah. 21 pups, two night champions, one grand night for a total of three. Yeah, we talked about her sire some in the last episode or one of the last episodes. Grand night champion, hard time awesome, and grand night champion, Red Ruby, hard time dot was the mother. Born in 2014, bred by Ben and Dylan Hovey and Nick Williams and owned by Ty Sanders. Awesome. I sure left his uh, mark on the breed and uh, uh, sure did. producing some good females, yep. looks like. Uh, next one, just fell off the current reproducers list just because they haven't had a, a litter in a, in a year or two, looks like. 
uh, but tied for second this year in number of title pups, and that is Grand Champion, Grand Knight Champion, Smoking Aces, dealing with Karma HTX. Uh, Karma, 24 pups uh, so far, four Knight Champions, one Grand Knight for a total of five, 21%. Yep, she's off of a dual Grand Campus Creek boater and River Ridge Lady Luck is the mother, born in 2017, uh, bred by Danny McGowan, owned by Justin Hofstetter. But uh, already just a 2017 model, already has 24 pups on the ground, and and it looks like they're doing good. Yeah, there's a few young English females on this list, so it makes you yep. kind of, That's, she's that one breed of is going, is on the right trajectory, looks like. Sure. Uh, next one here, tied for first this year, the number of title pups with three title pups just this year. Uh, dual Grand Champion, Minx, Sawdust, Swamp, Rosebud. Uh, 34 pups on the ground for Rosebud. Three night champions, three total. Yeah, Memory Maker, Hard Time, Texas Red. That's a dual grand uh, is the sire. And the Minx, Sawdust, Swamp, Katie, a night champion female, is her mother. Bred and owned by William Den Mink. She was born in 2016, so she's uh, you know under two year, or under 10 years of age. So probably still have more litters, I would think. Doing okay in this in this category for sure. I think this next one may be the youngest one that I've seen on the list so far, so we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we move through. But this is Champion Water Champion, Grand Knight Champion 2, Heat Sicker Mini Monster. Uh, tied for first this year with three titled pups coming off of her. Only 14 pups total. I don't know if that's I mean, just a couple litters, I think. Three night champions, one Grand Knight for four total, sitting at 29%. Boy, that's, that's coming along pretty good. Out of the box here for a young dog born in 2019. You're right. She is probably the youngest dog we have on this list here that made the list. Bred by Shane Cannon, owned by Grant Whitmer and Thomas Miller here. But she was off of Main Street Wild Crow. That's a uh, that's a Grand Knight dog, one of Asa Briggs' dogs. And the mother is a Grand Knight champion, Picasso Creek. Pay the Piper. Mini Monster. Both of those dogs have done good in Autumn Oaks over the past few years when I've been there. I got to hunt with Crow on a final cast, and Piper's been in the Grand 16 at least once. Yep. So the Wild Crow, he's won uh, just a whole lot more than just Autumn Oaks. I know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's uh, shift gears to the plot breed now. Uh, and there's a couple older, uh, you know, typically we've been seeing a lot of uh, 90s, some 2000 stuff, but we're going to get back in time a little bit here with a couple of them. We're going to start out off right off the bat with a 1970s dog. And this is Grand Knight Champion Short Ridges Queen. Uh, if you look back through any historical records and results, you see Queen's name a lot, a, a winner back in the day, and obviously a reproducer too. Uh, Queen, 22 pups on the ground, four Knight Champions, five Grands for nine total, 41%. That's wow. pretty good. You know, we talked about it a little bit before we started, uh, just upstairs before we started recording about how some a lot of these females we're seeing are more modern day females more so than the older one but here's one of the older ones born in 1976 uh owned by charles shortridge uh was a shortridge's queen but she was off of a dual grand king's tree talking casey and tree talking missy was her mother but yeah number one here on uh, on our plots for plot females 22 pups so not that many pups but out of those 22 nine of them titled and when we say title, we want to make it clear that's just, that's uh, that's Grand Knights or Knight Champion and Grand Knight. That's not you know just Field Champion or Water Champion. That those titles aren't counted. It's just Knight Champion and Grand Knight Champion titles. That's, yep, that's correct. Uh, tied with Queen for first overall is Champion Grand Knight Champion Blowers Redwood Josie. Uh, Josie, twenty nine pups on the ground, seven Knight Champions, two Grand Knights. That equals nine total. 31% for Josie. Yeah, and no, we're talking about a female that's about 20 years younger than Queen was here, you know, but uh, she's off of Buckeye Sarge the Third. He was a night champion dog, and her mother was Timber Ridge Mandy. She has a 1997 uh, birth date, bred by Danny Ellis and owned by Evan and Dan Workman. Uh, I've actually hunted with uh, Josie here before. I think it was at Autumn Oaks or maybe the World Championship. The Zones are one of those hunts, and she was for real. I loved that little female right there. Evan was hunting her, and that's kind of it's. It was her that that's because of her is how I got to meet Evan and and just a just a good good guy, good dog man. But uh, Josie was a good hound. I like that dog. Yeah. Um, another, uh, even let's fast forward even another 10 years here. N number three, historical reproducer, Grand Knight Champion, Harold's Miss T. Uh, not only a top historical reproducer, but actually tied for second this year as far as number of title pups this year. So 
historical, but she's already broke through the top. So uh, who's next? She's already there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for Miss T, 31 pups total, five night champions, three grand nights. That makes eight total title uh, night hunt title pups, and that's a 25.8%. Yep. And she is off a of dual grand Hager's Mingo Redwood Solid Oak HTX, and her mother was Harold's Penny. She was born in 2009, owned by uh, Bill Harrell of Indiana, Peru, Indiana there. But there's another little plot female, just a compact little dog, fast. Uh, I like little Miss T. He had her in the world hunt here. I think it was in, in Columbia City, Indiana. And uh, I had her picked. She was just cruising right along, and uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I, there's some stories that Bill might have miscalled her a little bit and uh, kind of <laughs> took her out there at the end. But, uh, man, she's just a super nice little dog. Yeah. Obviously. Compact little, quick little thing. Yeah, and reproducing her likeness must be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number four historical reproducing plot female is Grand Night Champion Allen's North Georgia Plot Star 2. Uh, 46 pups on the ground, two night champions, five grand knights. That's seven total, just a touch over 15%. Yeah, that's uh, that dog was bred and owned by Mr. Wayne Allen from Georgia, North Georgia. Actually, he had all those North Georgia plot dogs. Uh, had a lot of the females, Starry, had different numbers. This is Star 2. Uh, she was off a of grand night champion, Cybert and Otto Sarge, and her mother was a dual grand North Georgia plot star. I don't know which one I've hunted with. I've hunted with one of those at, at the at the Winter Classic, I believe, in Albany, Georgia. There I drew Wayne Allen with one of these females. But he always, they were good females, and he always kept some He always kept some good ones. This was one of them, Plot Star 2, 1992 birthday. A lot of those top producers, uh, uh, breeders, like to just keep that name on there, just yep. change the number at the yep. end yep. like that. Uh, there's a few here tied for fifth in the historical rankings. Uh, the first one's going to be night champion Ballard's Car Carolina Judy, excuse me, 41 pups for Judy. That's six night champions and six total, uh, t uh, title dogs. Yeah. Off of white hollow junior and white hollow dandy was the mother has a birthday, uh, mentioned the, the one a uh, little bit ago be one of the oldest. This one is actually the oldest in 1972 birth date of August 1st, 1972, so old that we don't have the breeder and owner listed in our system, but we could, we'd probably have to dig it up in our records in the in the UKC basement, office basement, and we could probably find it there. Yeah, I could have probably did that. I didn't. I'm about dang that, but so uh, also tied for that fifth will, here. That will reflect on your next paycheck. <laughs> I can already see that coming up in the review. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> I've made note. Uh, all right, where that are and we? a couple other things. <laughs> All right. Uh, Either pick, pick it up. Uh, also tied for fifth here is Cedar Creek Sizzling Brandy. Uh, Brandy, 35 total pups, three night champions, and three grands for six total. 17% for old Brandy. Yeah, off our world night champion, uh, Kansas Sizzling Heat. We talked about him a couple episodes ago. And the mother was Sizzling June. This dog was born in 1989, bred by the late Jim Cannon and Spud Reynolds, and owned by Rex Minert. Cedar Creek Sizzling Brandy. Yeah, and they're also tied in fifth here with uh, night champion champion Rugged Hills Brindle Jazz. 25 pups for Jazz, five night champions, and a grand night. Six total, 24%. Yeah, off of a dual grand sire, Rugged Hills Tennessee Buckshot, and her mother was Raper's Lightning Lucy, a 2003 model bred by Alan Moses, owned, by, owned and bred by Alan Moses. Yeah. Somebody you're very familiar with from your old stomping grounds in Tennessee. Yeah, down there in Athens, Rossville, Tennessee area. Yep. And they, yep. The thing about them is they're going to go to the hunts. You'll see, you'll draw yeah. a lot of plots down there because Alan, Kevin, yep. all those guys, they'll be Hicks, at the hunts. Bill competing. Hicks. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, who could be the next uh, plot females? We've got a few here on our current reproducers list that we want to give a shout out to. Right now, the current number one reproducer is Gazaway's Backwoods Bella. Only 22 pups on the ground for Bella right now. Still young yet, and one, one titled dog so far. Yeah, she is a 2017 model off of Laurel Creek Samson and Gary Salt Lick uh, Tree and Willow. Owned and owned by Terry uh, Gazaway, was bred by Mr. Gary Lloyd. Backwoods Bella. Uh, next here, we got Moses's Rugged Ridge Shout, current number two reproducer. Shout's got 50 pups on the ground already, one night champion already. Yep, we just mentioned Alan Moses. Uh, own, is the owner here, co-owned with Ethan Moses, uh, was bred by Mr. Brent Howard. This dog is a 2016 model, was out of night champion double aught buckshot and gill straps black cricket. 
I feel like I'm at the Rossville, Tennessee Club reading these names yeah. here. Right, look at the next yeah. one here. Rugged Hill, the current number three reproducing female, Rugged Hills Pistol Annie. 51 pups on the ground and one night champion. Yep, same sire, different dam here. Night champion Harris's Redwood Queen is the dam, also bred by Alan Moses, owned by Wesley Good and William Mee. Uh, that's a 2014 model is uh, Rugged Hills Pistol Annie. And not to be outdone, here's the brother Chad. Uh, Moses' Soaky Creek Hard Candy, the current number four reproducer. 70 pups for uh, for candy. Uh, one uh, total title dog so far. There you go. Grand Night Champion Moses Pretty Boy Poacher and Moses Soaky Creek Izzy. Uh, born in 2015, bred by uh, Chad Moses. Also owned by Chad. Let's shift gears to who's done the best this year. Uh, just as far as the past calendar year, like I said, December 1st of 22 to December 1st of 23. Uh, we've got a couple here tied. Uh, the number one will be Champion Perry's Solo Redwood Izzy. Izzy, 21 pups on the ground, three night champions, and two grands for five total. Puts her just right at 24%. Yep. Night Champion Hager's Mingo Redwood Jacob is a sire, and Harris is Redwood Queen. She's a night champion. That's the mother of Izzy. Born in 2011, Wesley and Gail Good were the breeders owned by Lindell Perry in West Virginia, I believe he is, right? That's right. And yeah. uh, also tied with him. Bear Hunter. Bear Hunter, mostly. Sends a lot of his females up to Jacob Coons over there in Ohio. He hunts, he coon hunts them, and Lindell Bear hunts them. Same dogs. Those guys, bear hunt, coon hunt, uh, rabbit hunt. Uh, they do everything. They make me look bad. Yeah, they make me, yep. <laughs> me too. Uh, tied with Izzy this year as far as titled pups is Beatty's Tree Shake and Sadie. Uh, seven pups overall, only just one litter so far, and two of those dogs have made night champion already, just 29%. Yep, off of uh, Double Aught uh, Buckshot again, and Harris's Redwood Queen is the mother here again. 2014 model bred by Alan Moses again here, and Ryan Beatty is the owner here of Tree Shake and Sadie. Oh. Moving on to the Red Bones. Uh, number one historical Redbone re, uh, reproducing female is Grand Night Champion Triple B Ragged Ridge Toady. Toady, 42 pups on the ground, 15 Night Champions, four Grand Knights for 19 total. That's 45%. Yep, in the Redbone breed, she has, uh, you hear her name uh, a whole lot in the Redbone breed here. Uh, Ragged Ridge Toady, she is off of Ragged Ridge CD. He was a dual grand from back in the day in my time. Uh, night champion Posey's Ragged Ridge, Katie Did, was the mother here, Bert, born in 2007, uh, bred by Brent and Colt Posey, owned by Keith Bowling, and uh, he is in, uh, I believe, Indiana, Indiana, I think he is, southern, or uh, just south of Indianapolis somewhere. But yeah, Ragged, or Triple B Ragged Ridge Toady. Produce, nope. produce some dandies. Number two historical reproducing redbone female is uh, dual Grand Moonlight Pepperan. Pepperan had 56 pup, pups on the ground, 11 night champions, 7 Grand Knights. That's a total of 18, 32%. Yep, and some of those were some of those males that we talked about that made the sire listing here a couple episodes ago for, off of old Pepper Ann. She was off of Steps Little Pepper, and I think probably if you remember, I, I, that's a dog I always loved, Little Pepper. They're just a good balanced dog. And then she was off of uh, probably one of the most popular uh red bone females ever to be in a night hunter run a series anyways is nighty night moonlight kate she uh surely made a name for herself back in the 2000s there when she was running the prina series for a couple of years she was born in 2003 pepper ann was bred by dave gallagher of ohio and owned by mr johnny biggert of ohio Speaking of uh, Nighty Night, Moonlight Kate, she actually comes in at number three on the list. Grand Night Champion, uh, Moonlight Kate here, 29 pups on the ground. That's kind of low uh, to be on this list, right? Six Night Champions, nine Grand Knights, but 15 total title pups, and that's over 50%, actually 52%. Well, it is, you know, but the first half of her life she spent out uh, hunting, you know, and Kate was, she placed high in the world. I remember... Uh, uh, one of the, one of Danny Biggert was handling her a lot. And, uh, I remember one year he told me, he said, man, he got Kate qualified or whatever. And he was telling me, he said, the rest of the guys, they had a bunch of dogs. They were kind of running, you know, running with, you know, and he said, the rest of the guys, they want me to qualify this dog and this dog and this dog for him or whatever. And he said, why? This is our best dog we got right here. Why would, why would we need to qualify anything else? And he went on and placed her 13th in the world that year, you know, above anything else they had, you know, they had five, six other dogs in the world hunt too, but she was just a tough, uh, dog. And here again, we talked about, uh, dogs that are 
producing better than themselves, maybe, or here, you know, Pepper Ann was one of those that places higher than Kate does here. So yeah, Kate was off of Reed Saline River Rat. He was a Grand Knight champion and Grand Knight champion Wapsie River Cookie was her mother and uh cookie was cookie also produced a couple other goons not just moonlight cape but there are several others she produced born in 1998 bred by uh, mr brad messer smith and scott grove of iowa and the owner was uh, danny biggert and dave gallagher of ohio moonlight cape number four on the list here grand night champion kentucky moonlight brianna so another uh, moonlight dog, and I'm assuming there's some similar lineage back in there somewhere between these dogs. Uh, Brianna had 31 pups on the ground, four night champions, and nine grand knights, 13 total for uh, 42%. Yep, she was off of dual grand moonlight big time bow, and her mother was a dual grand that I hunted with quite a bit that I really liked as well, a compact little dog named Moonlight Deanna. Born in 2009 was Brianna, owned by Dan Biggert, or bred by Dan Biggert again, and owned uh, by Shane Maxey and Danny Biggert. Moving on to number five here, and we're going a little bit further back in time here for this one. Uh, Grand champion Hayes Ramblin' Red Kate. Kate had 39 pups on the ground, 11 made night champion, one made grand night for a total of 12, and that brings you to about 31%. Yeah, I remember, you know, kind of being a red bone enthusiast or whatever, looking back through all the old history of the red bones and this and that, looking way back, the Hayes Ramblin' Red Dogs showed up a lot, and Kate was at the top of those, a lot of those lists. And uh, born in 1976, uh, here again, uh, breeder and owner are not listed, it was uh, Terry Hayes uh, from Missouri owned this dog, Ramblin' Red Kate, but she was off a of Ramblin' Buck and Pex Red Babe. So who could be next in the red bone breed? Uh, the, the current number one reproducer has uh, some similar lineage to a couple here in our top five. That's Grand Knight champion Moonlight Addiction. 23 pups right now for Addiction and all, uh, three Grand Knight champions. Yep. All three total dogs, and that's uh, 13% right now. Yep. Her mother was Grand Knight champion Kentucky Moonlight Brianna, uh, and then her daddy was Grand champion Grand Knight Moonlight Aftershock, another dog that did quite a bit of winning and a pretty solid home there. Uh, born in 2015, owned by, bred by Shane Maxey, and owned by Tony Dominguez. Got a few here tied for a uh, second on our current reproducers list. Uh, the first one will be night champion Bad Fort Kink. Uh, Kink, 20 pups on the ground, two night champions, and two total. Yeah, there's Sire Hard Rock. Uh, that's a dual grand. That I am not familiar with that dog at all. Williams Ramlin Red Lady Beto. I've, I've seen that dog before. This is a mother born in 2012. Bred by Travis Potter, owned by Michael Matthews. Uh, they're tied for second with the dual grand champion Crazy Mountain Midnight Ruby. Ruby also 20 pups on the ground and two grand knights. Yeah, off a of grand knight champion, Albie's Little Ace and Albie's Red Trixie was a mother born in 2014, bred by Ron Albie and owned by Ron. And uh, uh, the... The last one here tied for second on the current reproducers list is Dual Grand Crazy Mountain Midnight Ruby's Rose. Um, also first this year in number of title pups for a red bone. Uh, again, 20 pups on the ground and two night champions. Yep, off of a Wisconsin dog, T-Top Dark Timber Deacon and Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion Crazy Mountain Midnight Ruby, born in 2018, bred by Tim Chase of Montana and also owned by Tim. Yeah, yeah. to a uh, <laughs> mother-daughter uh, duo there. Mm-hmm. And uh, bringing up the uh, end of our uh, red bone female discussion here is our current number five reproducer, and that's field champion, grand night champion, grand champion, Wade's Red Bush HTX. Uh, 20 pups on the ground for this uh, female, uh, one title dog so far. Yeah, off of a dog named Rocky Top Jet. He was a grand night champion, and uh, his mother was a, or her mother was a grand field champion, grand night grand champion, Wade's Red Heat HTX. Born in 2013, bred and owned by Mr. Wade Coons from Pennsylvania. That's the end of our red bone discussion, and we got our last breed here up, and that's the tree and walkers. And we got a, a couple of uh, uh, good ones here to mention in the tree and walkers. Uh, number one historical tree and walker female is night champion Hardwood. She's not easy. Listen to this, folks. <laughs> 60, 69 pups for easy, seven night champions, 30 grand night champions for 37 total, and that brings her to 53.62%. 69 pups, over half of them are titled. And here again, I think we mentioned it when we were talking about uh, the one sire, the walker, sire, cuz, in one of the other episodes, you know, having that many pups and, she, and her having this many, this many titled is just, 
is just crazy. You know, you hear this name a lot, uh, and, and even more so in the last couple of years, seems like because of the TOC, there was, she had more, she had a bunch of pups in the TOC and the world hunts and, and not just that, but you know, we're just talking here about UKC titled dogs. Uh, there's others that aren't titled that aren't, we're not giving credit to here, but man, there's, there, you can't say enough about this female, you know, it's, uh, just a night champion dog, you know, so I don't really know anything about her, uh, about her herself, you know, it'd be kind of cool to know a little bit more. And I'm sure there's folks that uh, know a whole lot more about her and, but, uh, than what we do, but she was off a dual grand, all grand track, man. What was he? Our number, number two all time, I think track man. Yep. Uh, and then the mother was habit stylish Josie. Uh, talking about Harvard. She's not easy. Was born in 2008, bred by Farron and Chris Borden. And owned by Dennis Griffin and Jerry Frazier. Number one, she is number one of across the board of yeah. all breeds right here. She's not easy. Yeah, probably most famous for uh, her multiple, multiple times she was bred to Power Pack. I don't know the exact mm-hmm. number of times, but at least uh, six or I'm going to say five or six times to be safe. But uh, bred to Power Pack each time. And uh, I don't know. I, I've always heard the tales coming up that uh, you always want to get a pup out of the first litter if they make repeat litters. Sometimes they're not as successful. This kind of this kind of puts a kink in that theory a yeah, little bit. It does. Yeah. Sure does. Number two historical reproducing tree and walker female is dual grand champion Insane Winty. Winty has thirty seven pups on the ground, twelve night champions, seventeen grand knights, twenty nine total pups, and that brings her out to. Uh, Right above seventy eight percent. Yeah, that's just uh, <laughs> that's just crazy. She's a female that was owned by Greg Haring and Brent Deniston out in Nebraska, I think, is where they were from. Uh, but just uh, did a yeah, just a reproducer, you know, off of Turpin's Insane Cane. He was on our top five, I think, in the Walker Sires, and her mother was Naylor's Hurricane Jane. So she's bred to the hilt, you know, and and uh, bred to reproduce, and and obviously did. Shows up number two, bred by Mr. James Turpin, born in 2007. Yeah, a lot of top reproducing dogs in that pedigree. Yep. yep. Number three historical reproducer is champion, Grand Knight champion, Crocker's Quick Flash. Flash had 45 pups on the ground, 20 night champions, seven Grand Knight champions for 27 total. And that brings her out to an even 60%. Yeah, this dog is very well known in the state of Michigan here, owned by uh, Ben and Jeff Crocker, and quite a ways north of here, really. And to think where she's at, that, uh, hey, they sold a lot of good pups off of her, and, and they were reproducers. Quick flash. Off of Sun's Rock River Cord, he was a Grand Knight champion. And uh, the mother was Grand Knight champion Scott's Crooked, Crooked Creek Threat. She was born in 2002. Bred by Scott uh, Freisorger, I guess is how you pronounce that. Yeah, but she, Crocker's Quick Flash. Man, you saw her name a lot. Mm. Yeah, uh, here's another one you see a lot of uh, her name a lot as well. Uh, number four historical reproducer, that's champion, grad night champion, Backwater Pearl. Pearl had 37 pups on the ground, 12 night champions, and 14 grand knights. That's 26 total, uh, right above 70%. <laughs> You know, that's just crazy if you think about it, isn't it? We've got a couple of, uh, a couple of freaks like that here, and Backwater Pearl is one of those off of, of night champion Kitty's Wipeout Zeb, and her mother was a dual grand Moore's Hillbilly Bonnie. Uh, born in 1996, bred by Sam Moore and owned by Doug Compton of Arkansas. Crazy how many of these females are in the the back history of some of our top reproducing males. It'd be fun to look at the yeah. percentages of that, and then that's, maybe that's something I can do with some downtime uh, if I have any in the next few months. But uh, see a lot of uh, names. You see Backwater, Rock River, you know, Insane. You see a lot of names that we've talked about already in the male episode, and they're showing up here, and it's, yeah. it goes both ways. So. Uh, we have a couple here tied for fifth overall, and the first one is Grand Night Champion Abbott's Nocturnal Jody. Jody, 37 pups on the ground, seven night champions, 17 grand knights for 24 total, and that's uh, 64.86%. Yep, another name you see a lot in pedigrees. She was off of uh, grand knight champion Nocturnal Nailer, and the mother was grand knight Abbott's Bighorn Daisy. Another dog, Daisy, you see in a lot of pedigrees. You know, Nailer to Daisy. Yeah, man, you can't... Uh, they they were those uh, those uh, Abbott dogs were, ahead of, were, uh, were big dogs too, you know, but... Uh, 
and so was Naylor, you know, so I'd say Jody was probably one too. I don't know if I've ever seen her, but born in 1995, bred by Kenny Abbott and, and owned by Kenny out of West Virginia. Count that. He's, uh, he's bred a lot of good dogs. Yep. Yep. And, uh, he was a female guy for the most part, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Jody's tied for fifth historically with uh, world champion, world champion, Grand Night champion, Bolden and Turpins and St. Jane. 39 pups for Jane, nine night champions, 15 grand nights, 24 total. That's 61.53%. Man, that's just, you know, having seen this dog go when she was young in the world finals, Portland, Indiana, I remember I can still see it like it was last night, Turner flipping them loose there and her and her another dog just shooting straight in all four of them. She shoots straight in all along this little creek bank and she didn't waste it. 10 seconds later, she's already struck. And nails one hooks one off to the right there and sitting in their tree pretty quick in the world hunt and never looked back, you know, and just took that world championship at what was she, seventeen months old, I guess. Yeah. But then to see that and then the next year come back to play second and then eventually ending up and, and did a lot of winning after that, but ending up in the you know, uh uh you know, whelping thirty nine pups so far. And with a big percentage like that, 61%, obviously they were probably going into good hands, that helped, but uh, and that's just pretty impressive for uh, for a pretty historical uh, female right here, Bolin and Turpin's Insane Jane. She was off a Turpin Stylish Rube, who was a Grand Knight, and her mother was Grand Knight champion Naylor's Hurricane Jane, uh, born in 2004, bred by Howard Taylor Jr., and most recently owned by the uh, Mr. Stephen Kinney in Illinois. Yeah, we talked a little bit about the the impact that the Insane Jane and X Junior crosses yeah. had when you looked at some of the uh, top producing males. And so yeah. here she is getting her just you know, that, as well. Yep, that mm-hmm. was a that was a young dog. That was my first when she won it. That was my first world championship at UKC, two thousand five. And I remember I had to do the interview, and I remember there were a couple. I was so nervous. I <laughs> I would hate to go back and look at that and watch that interview. But uh, I know uh, uh, Tim Bolin. He was just a young cat at the yeah. time too. You know, he yep. was handling that dog. And uh, uh, there was yeah, it was <laughs> there was a lot of things that went on there. But I'll I'll never forget that world championship. That's for sure. Eighteen years ago. Yeah. Yeah. About. Well. So who could be the next uh, big tree and walker female reproducer? Man, that's going to be hard ones. for anybody to get up there. You would think that is a pretty impressive top five list for tree and walkers. You would think so. You would Boy. think so. The the cutoff there is 24, but we got a couple knocking on the door here. Uh, the first one here is our current number one reproducer, and that's uh, dual grand champion of Sloan's Insane Bella. So I assume there's probably some Insane Jane in this female's pedigree somewhere. Um and uh, Bella has 46 pups on the ground, three night champions, 15 grand nights, 18 total. She's at 39%. Yep. Sloan's Insane Kane and uh, Tree Singing Barbie Doll are the sire and dam, both grand nights. Born in 2013, bred and owned by Mr. T. Tom Sloan. Uh, let's see. You got another uh, number two here. And uh, tied for first this year as far as number of title pups during this calendar year with four uh, is Mullins Taking It Easy HTX. Uh, altogether, this dog has 48 pups, 11 night champions, and seven grand knights for 18 total, and that's 37 and a half percent. Yeah, off a of Red Eagle, good time, Charlie. He was uh, just a bench show uh, champion, and that's it there. And the mother was Hardwood Liquid Maxi, has no titles. Uh, born in 2016, bred by Adam Heron, and owned by Mr. Randy uh, Lester, Virginia, I think it is. Number three current reproducer is champion, grand knight champion Dunbar Zoe. Uh, Zoe, 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 probably yeah. Zoe. Forty-two um, pups on the ground, eight night champions, three grand knights for eleven total, and that's twenty-six percent. Yep, Hughes Storm and Hughes Mighty Dolly are the Siren Dam again. Uh, neither one of those are titled. Born in twenty thirteen, bred by Mister Larry Hughes, owned by Sharon Rowe. Uh, number four is a, probably a common name to a lot of our listeners. Uh, current number four and also tied for second this year with three title pups just in this past year, and that is night champion Halftime Ruby. Uh, Ruby has 41 pups on the ground, eight night champions, and two grand knights for 10 total, uh, sitting at 24.3% right now. Yeah, I'm one of the most winningest uh, females of all time here, and especially money-winning females. Uh, uh, but uh, she is off of night champion Tessa's Midnight Mule, and her mother was grand night champion Pepper Mist. 
Born in 2012, bred by Brett Myers of Iowa and owned by Brett and Wes Hamilton, also of Iowa. But yeah, that uh, that's a famous female right there. And I would say those numbers are going to increase. I know she just came off a litter not too long ago again. If you watched our 2023 Tournament of Champions live show, you probably heard this female mentioned a couple of times. I think she had three in the top 96, which was uh, led the way for females or tied with the lead for females. Yeah. Grand Knight champion L&L, she's out of your league. She's our current number five reproducer. She has 29 pups on the ground currently, three night champions and four grand knights for seven total, sitting at 24%. Yep, off of dual grand high expectations, and the mother is Grand Knight Stutzman's Midnight Star, a female I've hunted with before. Born in 2011, bred by Norman Stutzman of Indiana and owned by Leland Miller and Lyle Lehman. Out of your league, Libby. What's the young boy that hunted a dog named Libby who's who's off of this Libby female? I Maddox think. Maddox Arnett. Arnett. Yeah, I think he's got one of those dogs. Yeah. Uh, next one on the list here, uh, another former world champion, world night champion, champion, grand night champion too, Spavanaugh Creek in St. Emmy. You went from your first world championship to my first world championship in Marshalltown, go. Iowa, 2019. Yeah. Got yeah. to see Emmy and Lane Denny take yeah. on the crown. But, uh, first year we did a payout. Yeah. Emmy would have never, I never knew anything about her. I don't know if she had been bred prior to that, but uh, she now has got 21 pups on the ground, one night champion, and six grand nights for a total of seven, uh, right at a third percent, 33%. Yeah. Yep. She's off a night champion, gorgeous Gomer, and her mother was Caney Creek Jojo. She was born in 2012, bred by Mr. David Berry and, and owned by Lane Denny and Carl Reed, both of Oklahoma. But yeah, she is, uh, she's throwing some good ones. Next one here is a dog that we talked a lot about recently. Uh, actually was the dam of our 2023 Triple Crown winner, uh, Willie's Little Ann, and that's Wipeout. She squirms a lot. Uh, she was tied for first this year in number of titled pups with four, uh, but only seven pups on the ground total. Three of them made night champion. One made grand night champion for four total, 57%. And that gives her a good percentage, that's for sure. Off of Grand Knight Champion Joiner Town, Wipeout Zeb 3, dog that won a lot in his day. Grand Champion, uh, Knight Champion Dixie's Heaven on Earth is the mother. Born in 2013, bred by Harley Smith and owned by Nicholas Jones. And also uh, producing four title pups this year to tie for first for the for the calendar year is Knight Champion Mountaintop Squeaky Clean Daisy. Daisy, 31 pups on the ground currently. Four night champions, uh, four total title dogs. That's thirteen percent. Yeah, Daisy was off a of Hagerman's Rattler, and Hagerman's Dazzle Clean was a mother born in twenty seventeen, bred by Jeff Hagerman and owned by John Mitchell. That's a wrap for our top reproducing females, and for our uh, kind of our three part series on reproducers. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was fun to do. It was fun to to kind of get the information on it and and talk through some of the top producers and. Yeah, hopefully this is these are episodes that you'll bookmark and kind of refer back to and listen back to. There's a lot of value in it, I think. Yeah, I love this history stuff on dogs and going back and being able to have these numbers for reproduction records and things like that, you know. But it's so impressive. If you really did a top five all time, you know, these uh uh you know, four of the train walkers are gonna make that top five list, throw that uh, English female Dottie in there, she'd be number two, but oh, wow, that's just that is just impressive. Almost seems impossible. But uh, hey, kudos to all the breeders and that are making these uh, good crosses. And uh, and uh, it, here again, I think last time we talked a little bit about, especially if you're young, I was the same way. You have a female, you know, something you kind of like, and probably by today's standards, you never consider breeding the dog if if they weren't, you know. It's just, I think, kind of human nature when you first get into it. And what these younger guys are, if you really want a good bred dog, this is where you go if you want to have your best odds. Go, yeah. to the, go to the guys that are experts at this, that have done it for a long time, have proven, you know, their strains, uh, you know, reproduce like these. They don't all make it. I don't care how good they dotty. Not all the dotties are probably going to make it. And and not all the easies and not every one of them are going to make it, but I'm telling you, a dang good percentages have, have made their mark. That's for dang sure. Yeah. Hey, if nothing else, even if you just don't get a pup from them, if you're wanting to get into the game or even if you've been in the game for a while and you're thinking about making some crosses, go to the breed of your choice and maybe jot down some of the breeder names that we mentioned and give them a phone call and pick their brain a little bit. You can learn something from these guys. Absolutely.
Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.